Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are gonna be covering day two of a very fun trip to the East Coast. If you missed our very first video covering kind of like day one and some travel, go ahead and watch that one afterwards or make sure you come back to this one after watching that video. But let's get to it. So we started off the morning by getting some Duncan, and then one of my favorite parts of the entire trip happened. So the guys thought it would be funny to start like shaking the van. We were listening to some Hot Wheels music for Jack, and I noticed that the guy next to us like obviously saw this van shaking back and forth, and he was busting up, and I was just cracking up so much. It was one of the best moments of the trip as far as like getting me to laugh. But anyways, on this day, we decided to go ahead and drive to DC. We were gonna check out the mall there and uh, just visit all of the places as much as we could. There really is so much to see. But this is Aubrey just kind of dancing to some of the music that was playing. Sometimes I wish I could, you know, just play the clip for you guys, but then I don't wanna get like a copyright strike or anything like that. So that's why some of these clips will obviously be muted, but overall we had a good time in the car listening to tons of different varieties of music. But you can see the little Washington, the little, <laughs> it really wasn't little. You could see the Washington Monument as we're approaching DC. And one of the great things was that our family like knew where to go. They had so many facts about different places. We see the spy museum here. We even passed by this church that, you know, apparently Lyndon Johnson would pray here for moral clarity about the Vietnam War. So it was just really cool because it wasn't just like, you know, we were going and doing this by ourselves. It was so nice to have like family with us who knew where to park, who knew like how to get to things. We didn't have to stress about, you know, figuring all that stuff out. So we were actually able probably to get even more stuff done because we didn't have to spend the time and energy figuring out how to go see the sites. And it was also really nice to have such knowledgeable family members to give us some little, you know, facts about different areas that maybe we wouldn't have known just driving past them. But on the screen, I will be posting like what certain buildings are if, you know, I was, you know, made aware of what they were. And overall, you know, like the weather this day was really pleasant. It wasn't super hot. It was warm, but it wasn't like super hot. It was bearable. This is the Senate side of the Capitol where the U.S. Senate sits. This tunnel right here during the inauguration is where the car carrying the president or president-elect drives in and nice. drops off the person for their inauguration. Cool. And as we get to the other side, we'll see where the House of Representatives sits. All right. So this dome here was actually built after the War of 1812 because of, I guess like the British came and like burned stuff down. So they built this. And then they also built on to like the main structure of the building for the expansions for the, the House and the Senate as well. So this is the House wing and then this is the Senate wing. These extensions were actually added as, you know, the country expanded. And then apparently when the House or the Senate are in session, there are flags that are like put so that you could, you know, see visually outside the building that they are actually in session. So today they were not. So apparently prior to Reagan's presidency, all of the inaugurations would take place on the east side of the Capitol. But starting with Reagan's presidency, they have now taken place all on the west side of the Capitol. Do not have to be good Even the best of us have been misunderstood So get up on your feet The sun is shining repentance through so the first place that we actually like went into and explored, we didn't just like walk outside and see the front of a building, was the U.S. Botanic Garden. And it was really cool because they had different rooms for different like types of plants, like different areas that you would experience in the U.S. 
for me and my brother-in-law, Eddie, it was kind of like sentimental to like walk through the desert areas because uh, we spent, you know, some time in Arizona doing our schoolwork at ASU. That's where I actually, I met him and then eventually I met Juan. So my brother-in-law was like the first person I met in my extended family now. have to be known Even the best of us have sometimes felt alone This whole world is your home So reach out your branches Lay your roots back to the soil And watch the rain help But after exploring all of those very beautiful plants, we took a little break in the shade and ate some strawberries, ate some of the snacks that I prepared the day before. And Aubrey was just going crazy. She was finding so many feathers on the ground and you know, we ended up having to break out one of our little Ziploc bags for her to collect everything. This may not be the cleanliness collection of hers, but you know, we make sure she washes her hands before eating and, and I try to get her to eat even wash the feathers too so that they're not you know super gross we didn't get to go inside this museum but apparently it's one of the newer ones the american indian museum and as we were walking around there were so many food trucks there were like ice cream and other like actual food items you know being sold everywhere so i've only ever seen you know pictures of the mall and it was so much bigger in person than you know, when, when you're looking at a picture and even though the people are really small, like you don't, f I mean, I didn't feel like it was this huge, huge strip of grass and it, it's just ginormous. And so it really like brings it to perspective when you look at pictures where this lawn is like filled with people, just how many people there like had to have been there because it is just so big. So the place we're walking over right now actually used to be a canal, but now it is a street that runs like right by the White House. And then one kind of cool thing that really didn't even cross my mind until someone brought, brought it up was that like this, this whole area is just about like 200 years old. Really, it's not that old in the grand scheme of things. So it just kind of adds to the perspective when you're looking at all of these buildings and the trees and you know, like everything like that. Like this wasn't here just not that long ago. So the next museum that we decided to actually like walk into was the Natural History Museum. And honestly, I feel like you could spend an entire day here and not even see everything. There was so much to see. Yes. Bubby, what was that? A big what? <laughs> elephant, yeah. And what sound does the elephant make? But the two areas that we decided to look at were kind of like the dinosaurs and stuff like that for Jack and Aubrey. She enjoys them too. But then we also wanted to go see a lot of the rocks and gems and crystals and all of that because Aubrey is also really into that aside from her love for birds.
Are you excited to see the gems? Can we buy some? Maybe. <laughs> One funny thing that I don't want to, you know, call the parents out and show the picture I took. I took a picture of them to show my mom because I thought it was funny. But I saw two parents and two kids just sitting on a bench in the museum. The kids were watching something on a phone and the parents, both of them were like leaning each other and sleeping. <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't imagine having that level of trust, not only in my children to not like run away and like escape, but then also like just in everyone around you, like for both parents to just knock out and sleep on a bench, it just, it just blew me away. I, I wouldn't, I could never do that. I, I'd either have to be awake and Juan would sleep or vice versa, but I would not feel comfortable just sleeping and then letting my children just like have a phone and sit on a bench. And, the, and the, these kids maybe were like seven, nine years old, but still, I mean, like they were, they were small children that could have easily been taken if, you know, there were bad people around. I've climbed the mountains in Montana, danced in the lights of New Orleans, Portland ran away with me and San Francisco stayed with me. Nashville made its way in between. So in general, I'm kind of drawn to more like, you know, elements that are bluish or purple. I really like amethyst. And at one point in my life, I want to say I actually had like a little chunk of amethyst and I have no idea where it is now. So hopefully I will rediscover it at my parents' house when I go through some of my old belongings. But one thing that I like appreciated in this part of the museum was that they like kind of color coordinated some sections. So you could just go see like tons of different purple, like gems, minerals, whatever, um, or, you know, the turquoise or things like that. And then towards the end of like the gem and mineral section, there was the Hope Diamond, which has some type of connection to, you know, like the diamond that you see in the Titanic movie. So after the museum, we went and sat under one of the very beautiful trees. There was just so much shade. It was so beautiful here. And we enjoyed some Lunchables, our own little packed lunch, and Aubrey loved chasing some birds. Did you? 
Our next stop was going to be the Washington Monument, and up close, this is like massive. You look up, and it's just ginormous. Everything always just looks so much smaller in the pictures, and then you get there, and it's just so much different than what I would have expected. But by now, Jack had knocked out, so he's taking his nap for the day. This was one of the reasons why I knew like we had to bring a stroller of some sort, because today was just going to be such a long day that... He needed to nap (laughs) so that we can have a happy kid in the evening. And then while we were at the Washington Monument, you could kind of get a glimpse of the White House as well as the Jefferson Memorial. And the rumor is that there's actually a direct sight line from the White House to the Jefferson Memorial because as it was being built, FDR wanted to have like a direct sight line of it because he apparently really admired Jefferson. It feels like it's like swaying. That's just you, Eddie. (laughs) That doesn't look like it's swaying. Whoa, it looks like it's swaying. So this is the World War II memorial. There's just a bunch of different like pillars with state names and territory names, I think, on them. And something I found odd was they were in no particular order. It wasn't like they were all in alphabetical order or anything like that. Um, If you know why they are in the order that they're in, go ahead and drop that down in the comments because that was something that I didn't really learn. But you might see some people dipping their feet in the water and that's kind of to pay respects to the veterans, I think, who didn't make it home or just all the veterans that, you know, participated in World War II. So around this time, Aubrey started complaining of her leg hurting. So we took a little break and were visited by a nice little squirrel that Juan wanted to give a fruit snack to. Probably not the healthiest choice for that animal, but you know, it is what it is. I couldn't, I couldn't stop him. But we needed to keep going, so Aubrey <laughs> crammed in the back of our stroller. We've done this before on walks when she's just like totally done with walking, but Jack wasn't done taking his nap, so she was fine. I mean, she, she'd rather do this than walk. And we made our way to the Korean War Veterans Memorial. I did look to see if there were any people with my maiden name, but you know, there were no Coopers there. And then after we visited the Korean War Veterans Memorial, we went to the Vietnam War Veterans Memorial. And if you go there, they had volunteers that if you wanted to find a specific name, they could help you because there was just like no particular or obvious order. Maybe there was an order, maybe it was like the order that people died in or or something like that, but there was no like alphabetical (laughs) order at all so they do have help if you want to find a specific name and one thing that Juan did was he had an energy drink apparently you're supposed like veterans do this with like a beer or something but you know you crack open 
a beer or your drink and you, you pour it out in honor of the veterans who like can't do that anymore. But Juan showed his respects um, at the Vietnam War Veterans Memorial. And like I said, at first, I, I had no idea what he was doing. <laughs> I was like, why are you wasting some of your energy drink? But after it was explained to me, you know, it, it, made, it made sense. And then I didn't film it, but before we visited the Lincoln Memorial, which was kind of our last stop, we did go into a little gift shop and pick up a postcard for our vacation. I didn't mention this in our day one video, but we also got a postcard near the Potomac River. And that just kind of adds to our collection for just all of our family vacations. If you want to know more about what I'm talking about, go ahead and check out the video I've linked above. It explains like a simple, easy, like cost-effective way to remember your vacations without spending like an arm and a leg on tons of souvenirs. But anyways, we picked up um, probably, <laughs> we got so many postcards, so we have a lot of, you know, probably a lot to write down on them, so it's fine. Usually I just try to get one, but we saw so many things that it was kind of necessary, I guess, to pick up some extras. After we got the postcards, we headed on over to the Lincoln Memorial. And in this memorial, you can see his Gettysburg Address as well as his second inauguration speech. But what Aubrey really liked was the big eagle sculptures. <laughs> so she made sure to have a little photo taken in front of one of those. So at this point in the day, it would normally just be time to walk back to your car and go home. But as you guys saw, we did a whole bunch of walking. I think we walked about five, five and a half miles at this point, maybe four. I don't know. But it, it was definitely up there. We had tired kids of at least, you know, Aubrey was definitely tired of walking and it would, you know, add a whole bunch of time to our day of just, you know, walking back. So my brother-in-law had a great idea of like taking an Uber from where we were at the Lincoln Memorial back to where the car was parked. And then um, Juan and I stayed with the kids at, you know, near a tree and enjoyed the nature. But then they came and picked us up. And so that just saved like a lot of time. And we were able to, you know, go and explore even more throughout the day rather than, you know, spending a lot of their time just retracking our steps. Yeah, I'll take you back. 
So after driving by some more kind of historic buildings and some beautiful greenery, something we don't get too much of here in California, at least where we are, we went to this cute little deli, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name because I'm going to totally butcher it. If anyone wants to write the phonetic pronunciation down below in the comments, please do because we all kind of were like struggling. We were, it was a struggle bus trying to pronounce the name of this very adorable deli. But we picked up some sandwiches and some little, you know, glass bottled sodas. And then we walked a little bit further to go visit like a park in the neighborhood, which again, the trees were big. The whole thing was shaded. It was just gorgeous. And Except for the bugs, you know, we had a really, really nice time enjoying our little dinner here. I got like a turkey sandwich that was just massive. There was like a piece of bread in the middle of everything. It was just like too big to eat. And Juan had this like massive meatball sub, which he enjoyed. And oddly enough, the kids really weren't in the mood to eat much of my sandwich. I asked for extra meat because they really just kind of like eating everything separated. They don't like it all together. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm just I'm getting turkey. They'll eat the meat, get that protein. And they just kind of wanted to play, oddly enough. But, you know, I figured if they're not hungry, they're not hungry. So just let them play and, and continue to have fun. I wish I could leave my skin behind in this old rented room. Float my way across the great divide and be buried in you. I've been looking far and wide for what I gotta prove. So apparently in our first video, we saw some canals when we went to see Harper's Ferry. And I believe this is the same canal that came all the way from there and kind of goes through the city, which is kind of cool. But when they say drain the swamp, you know, there's a lot of swampy areas or there were a lot of swampy areas around here. And so that's kind of where the term comes from. But we saw all that while walking to our next destination, which was like a cupcake and espresso bar, although the espresso bar side was closed for the rest of the evening. So we ended up just getting some cupcakes here, no coffee. I was a little bummed about that, but it's all good. So of the four cupcakes that we got, I was really excited about this first one that we tried. It was a lemon cake 
with a raspberry compote or raspberry filling of some sort and then a lemon cream cheese frosting. And whenever I, I go out and I try something that like, I know I can make cupcakes. So I hear I'm, I'm paying for a cupcake, which a lot of the times I feel like I could just make. I like to try to get flavor combinations or things that I haven't tried before to see if I like them. And then I kind of know, hey, I'm pretty sure I can, you know, recreate this at home. So I'm looking forward to, you know, trying to make something like this when we get back home and I find the time or when our lemon tree starts to produce more fruit. Um, have one. Chocolate sure have cake one. with crunchy yeah, peanut so. butter icing. What do you think, dude? Flower. Is it Aww. yummy? Aww. Aww. I my cute buddy. <laughs> <laughs> After enjoying the very delicious cupcakes, we made our way back to our car. And one thing that was kind of cool to stumble upon was a little milk drop-off from the South Mountain Creamery that we actually visited in our first day. This is where we went to go get that fresh ice cream if you guys already watched that other video. And so it was really cool to see like a little milk drop-off station in a completely different area. <laughs> But, you know, to kind of tie it back to where we visited just, just one day prior. So, I don't know. This was kind of cool to see. I don't see this at all where I'm from. So, it may be like a normal thing for you watching. But for me, it definitely was not. Then it was just time to make the pretty long drive home to go and rest. We drove through beautiful trees. And it's just so... It, I can't get over just how beautiful it was. And like serene and relaxing. It also helped because, you know, it was fun. I really enjoy listening to music and the car, you know, we always got to pick, you know, what song do you want to listen to, Aubrey? What song do you want to listen to, Juan? And, and so we each kind of got to pick something that was enjoyable to listen to. About halfway through our drive home, I think, you know, we had to take a little potty break. And so we stopped at a gas station and we got like, I was really parched. So Juan got me something to rehydrate myself as well as an icy to share with the kids. We don't usually get those very often. So that was definitely a treat. And then we made our way back home and the kids played a little bit before winding down for bed. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video just as much as I had fun living through the day. It was so enjoyable to, you know, see different areas, have people with us who like had facts about the different things that we were seeing. And it was also really helpful because, you know, the the family that we were visiting were, were very helpful with the kids. So like I didn't always have to carry Jack on my shoulders or carry the backpack. And so I'm very appreciative because that also made my experience like even more enjoyable that I wasn't like having my back ache from, you know, carrying everyone's snacks or things like that. It was nice to have the men, you know, kind of step up and, and help with that. And I'm just I'm very uh, grateful for their help. But I hope you guys are going to stick around and stay tuned for our final day of vacation. That will be my next video. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that like button and I will catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.